The Combat Collective is back with another event breakdown, one of quite a few over the next couple of weeks here on the channel. The hype train and all the buildup for Battle of Robots Group A has now passed us, so let's realign our course a little bit and start talking about Extreme Robots once again here with this new castle breakdown. We're recording this on the same week as the Colchester event is taking place, so we're playing a little bit of catch-up here. Let's tell you all about what happened before the mid-season break, and maybe even more importantly, what happened during the mid-season break with the transaction deadline that Extreme Robots did for the first time ever this year. All that and more right here, right now, talking about UK robots on the Combot Collective. Oh my god! Wow! This is the biggest play we've ever seen! He has preserved enough energy to get in the flick on Carbine. We're gonna go all the way! Right, I don't! Don't say the boy, my child! I'm gonna tell you that! Welcome to the Calm Part Collective. Hello everybody, welcome to the Combat Collective, bringing you everything you want to know from the world of robot combat, from the heavyweight class to the fleaway class, from battle bots to the live circuit, and to the live circuit we go here. It is once again Extreme Robots Breakdown time, our first one in a couple of months. We put this one off back a little bit. Honestly, I thought Extreme Robots Colchester was happening on the following weekend, not this weekend. So this one is coming out a little bit later than I would have liked, but we've also been putting out videos like crazy lately. So I guess we'll let it happen. You can get this one and then expect Extreme Robots Colchester very, very soon down the line after we talk about Battle of Robots and Robots Live in detail. Look forward to that. But yes, as always, I am your host here at the Combot Collective, Sterling Brown, a.k.a. Sterling TXTG on Instagram, Cordia 300 on Discord and Reddit. Happy to join you all here in this very early Texas day. Weather is starting to cool down here in the Lone Star State after some rain. We got a lot of robot combat to talk about here in this video as we play a little bit of catch up. So we'll go ahead and jump into this. The Combat Collective, as always, is sponsored by our friends at RobotsRoomMyLife.com. They're the merchandise provider for numerous East Coast robot combat teams spreading their love across the world. You can find merchandise on this website from robots that competed on BattleBots such as Starchild, Shredderbro, and Ripperoni. Get some stick Starchild poker chips, a Starchild t-shirt, maybe even one of their jackets. Get the Ripperoni bomber jacket. Get the Ripperoni pizza box. And while you're at it, maybe get the Shredderbro prints, a Shredderbro t-shirt, maybe a poker chip from them as well. And then on the other side of the table, NHRL. Are you a live event fan? Maybe a fan of the more niche part of robot combat? Popular NHRL robots such as Milk Tank have merchandise on this website alongside numerous robots from Team Shredder Bro and Omega Team, friends of the Combat Collective there. You can even get lifestyle merchandise that doesn't have to do specifically with robots on this website. You can get tote bags, t-shirts, jackets with the NHRL logo on it, with the Robots Room My Life logo on it. Numerous very unique things you can buy from this website. So yes, if you're looking to expand that Robot Combat collection, look in the description below. Robots Room My Life a proud supporter and sponsor of the Combot Collective. And stay tuned because when BattleBots Champions finally comes around, we are going to be doing our final giveaway in partnership with Robots Room My Life. Super excited for that. But now that's enough chatter. Let's talk about Extreme Robots. Since we last did a breakdown episode on them in early July, a lot has happened in the world of XR, the second largest heavyweight competition in the world today. When we last tuned in, we saw Zadkiel retire after Shock and win the Spinners Championship. We saw Donald Thump go on a tear and win three straight fights. We even saw the expected rise of robots such as Eruption, Tectonic, and TR4 finally. It's been an entire two months though since we last delved into the extreme arena outside of robot combat tonight. And now that Extreme Robots has finished up their mid-year break and are moving towards the latter three events of their season, I guess it's time for us to do some catch-up here and finally talk in full about Extreme Robots at Newcastle, a thrilling competition which saw numerous full combat robots debut, robots with great rides suffer hard falls, and it even got to hold the honor of being the first Extreme Robots live event streamed on YouTube. We're going to be going over that event in detail, plus the Extreme Robots mid-season transfer window, seeing where numerous robots such as Troublemaker and TR4 moved up in the build-up to Colchester. 
But we'll start here with our free agents. And perhaps at this event, we had our most exciting crop of wild cards yet with OGs, newcomers, and even a couple of teams who fought individually in the past all in the house. We'll go ahead and kick it off with the most disappointing of the lot here with the former Axebot powerhouse Titan. We've discussed the trembling Titan before recently on the Combot Collective as during Extreme Robot's first stop of the year in Brentwood, the Purple Hammerbot had come out of retirement to participate in the new Fight Club rounds, but amid so many newer challengers, the Titan showed some serious age during that event and continued to here with a knockout and judges decision defeat, 0-2, which brought its overall ranking to number 96 overall on the TCC rankings. For some more exciting machines though, we jump over to Ironheart 88, a robot which had tried to appear at Robot Wars and Triforce, a Series 10 dropout for Robot Wars. We've seen Ironheart 88 in the past with average success, but Triforce had been an ongoing saga for quite some time in the world of UK robot combat. The team first got the hype train built around their new ring spinner around Robot Wars Series 9, what feels like eons ago but it didn't get its opportunity until Robot Wars Series 10, only to withdraw due to internal issues. After missing its one and only opportunity, Triforce appeared as a demo robot at numerous events and competitions, but finally, finally decided to jump into the world of Extreme Robots Spinner Division just a couple of months ago. Sadly, both Ironheart 88 and Trihorse would fall to 0-2, but Triforce would stand to be the more memorable with respectable defeats to some game robots like Immersion and Zadkill, while Ironheart's flipper would half-heartedly push it through a rumble, then lose its only full combat fight outright by KO. The highlight though, once again for this class of robots, had to have been Donald Thump, for better or worse. Last time we saw it in Maidstone, Donald Thump shocked everyone around with three straight KOs versus other vertical spinners, putting together a career best outing while accumulating a whopping 24 points on the TCC overall rankings. But all it takes is one bad event to erase that goodwill, and that is exactly what happened here. Team Ballistic's own presidential prune would follow up a three knockout victory event with one that had it going 0-3 oh with three knockout losses, completely erasing every point it accrued the month prior. But that's it for our three agents. Technically, there were two left to talk about, but they did end up joining a team later on, so more on that later. We now take a tour to our four teams competing for the Extreme Robots Team Championship, and this time we kick off with our bottom dwellers at Team Divinity, who, like we mentioned on RCT, will have entered Colchester as the only team of our four to have zero points so far, a point drought which has gone on since April of 2022, pretty much when this whole team process started. This team, despite having the pedigree of two iconic rosters and team roaming robots and team saint behind it, just has not been able to figure things out at all in this ever-evolving field at Extreme Robots. The only robot here that has delivered is honestly the one and only Zadkiel. And I've said it before, but as long as Team Divinity have the best robot in all of Extreme Robots on their roster, the rest really doesn't matter as much, you gotta say it. This team, at least in the spinners division, is something you always got to watch out for. It was usual business for the Extreme Robot Spinner Champion here, as Zadkiel put together three more successful defenses of its championship over free agents Ironheart88, Donald Thump, Triforce, and even won over its own teammate Galactus in a one-on-one -on -one battle. This robot has picked up right where it missed in April to be a relentless force in the sport, sitting pretty as the number 5 overall ranked robot in TCC's overall rankings just before the BattleBots Champions of Battle of Robots updates start rolling in. Everyone else though, it's been the usual disaster. Zagkiel may be the heart and soul of Team Saint, but right now it's far from the only robot on their roster. As Team Saint, for the first time ever, showed up as a full squad with Gabriel, Saint, and even Uriel making it to the event this time. Uriel showed up, and that's it. It showed up. It certainly didn't show out. It went 0-2, while Saint would go an impressive 0-5 with three of its defeats being by way of out of the arena, putting it as TCC's lowest ranked robot overall right now. The only bright side to the Team Saint Sportsman Heavies would be the fact that finally, after a year and a half of TCC ranking totals, we at long last see Gabriel pick up a victory in a melee over Thor, TR4, and Ignition. 
This was an impressive win over some very game robots, but not enough to save it. Gabriel is still a 1-14 robot this year entering the Colchester weekend. And as for the team roaming robots machines, we would see the brand new Ripper 7 skip out on Newcastle, which left us with Ripper 6, who had been average up to that point this year, and Galactus, who had a very impressive May but fumbled in June. Here we would see Ripper 6 hold its own, only fighting on two to three shows and going one and one with its loss being a knockout defeat to Eruption. And then Galactus, meanwhile, also held its own with a one and one record, picking up a knockout victory over a struggling Donald Thump before losing that aforementioned Spinners Championship match to its teammate Zagkiel. Credit to Galactus though, it held its own versus Zagkiel and even managed to do some serious damage to its wheels, probably the most damage we've seen on Zagkiel yet. Galactus definitely sits at Extreme Robot's second best spinner right now with the retirement of Aftershock. And finally, we have Thunderchild who switched teams thanks to the Fight Club rounds. Now on Team Divinity here, and as always, we give our kudos to Team Ironclads for being a constant source of footage for our content on our channel. Extreme Robots has gotten much better about it lately, but last year these guys were pretty much the sole source of heavyweight action in the country. So much love to Team Ironclads, but Thunderchild finishes 1-2 and two here with a 3-7 and seven record on the year. Thank you to Jack for correcting me. I will fix that on the rankings. Next up, we go to Team Quake, the original leaders from show number one and the leaders entering the midseason break by just one show point. That's right, a lead reduced from three points to one point in just two shows here with Team Inferno now down by one point and the Wolfpack down by two. But more on those teams later. The Team Shock led Team Quake for the first time since 2017 entered a show featuring full combat robots without the recently retired Robot Wars finalist Aftershock as the team rode in with only two Shock robots in Tectonic and Manta. But oh boy, both certainly held their own to bring the team one point and keep their lead entering the break here. Both Manta and Tectonic finished a weekend with three wins, two losses, with half of their combined wins being by way of knockout. Manta still had some internal issues, including some big-time stuff against Mega Mouse, but it still performed to a high level here. Tectonic, meanwhile, came up when it mattered most, successfully defending its Extreme Robots heavyweight title three times over on the weekend, with two of these victories coming against the impressive flipper of TR4. This solid performance would move Tectonic to a respectable number 34 on the overall ranking list entering the Colchester event. In my opinion, though, the big news on this team had to be the return of my boy taking off the hat, Thor. After one month of absence, Europe's most consistent Axe bot brought a ton of points to Team Quake during the Brentwood event after a chain of impressive 2-1-2 victories, and its presence was dearly missed on Team Quake in June. But despite some impressive aggression, weapon power, and drive, James Marston's Axe bot would only bat 500 at this event. Two wins, two losses, both by knockout. Thor did beat some robots such as Thunderchild, TR4, and Ignition during the weekend, but Team Thor has to be kicking itself over that defeat against Gabriel. You need to win those melees versus fledgling contenders, and Gabriel really snuck away with one there. Troublemaker was also here, putting together a 1-1 one -on -one weekend, and that meant only four robots on Team Quick at Newcastle, kind of suffering from the Team Inferno issue, but... Enforcements would arrive during this weekend's Colchester event, with Team Shock bringing a new robot named Poseidon to add to their ranks. But what brought us here, though? Thunderchild had shifted to Divinity thanks to the Flight Club rounds, Aftershock had to retire, and Mega Mouse, well... Mega Mouse, the former Extreme Robots heavyweight challenger and once a tag team champion, tag team partner to Thor as well, had joined the dark side with Team Wolfpack. Yes, turns out Team Wolfpack are apparently the heels of this whole thing, and this whole time I just thought they were some new team and nobody had some sort of alignment. The idea of them being bad guys when they have robots like TR4 is a bit odd, but hey, 
Maybe not anymore. More on that in the end of the episode when we talk about the transaction window. Team Wolfpack lit up the weekend at Maidstone, but struggled here at Newcastle, putting together zero points just like in Brentwood. So now the team, just like Team Quake, sits at four competitors. So the move from Mega Mouse was honestly very much needed for the team. And Mega Mouse made quite a mega impression in its first weekend with its massive upset over former teammate Manta on show number three. This was the highlight of Mega Mouse's weekend, which was otherwise quite average with a two win and three loss showing at Newcastle. Entering the event though, the story for Team Wolfpack was all about TR4, one of the circuit's most powerful flippers and a robot that was due for not one, but two championship opportunities over the weekend. But like we already mentioned, TR4 would unfortunately choke these chances, losing to the low pressure defending champion Tectonic both times by way of KO. The robot was outdriven, outcontrolled, and outhouse robot in each fight. And on top of that, TR4 would also lose a team four way later on in the weekend, but at least that one was a judge's decision. This was a career worst week for TR4, but greener pastures are up ahead with the aforementioned exchange deadline. Finally, with Team Wolfpack, we go to our short king, Shane Lael, with his crew of Iron Owl robots. And as mentioned in the past, while Iron Owl 6 skipped out on Maidstone, it would be in attendance for Newcastle, with Iron Owl 5, the eldest Owl of them all, sitting out instead. In its steed, Iron Owl 6 performed, but really didn't impress with a 1 win, 2 loss weekend, with its sole win coming in a 2 1 2 over Ignition and Implosion alongside Tag Team Extraordinaire Mega Mouse. Iron Awe 8, the far and long MVP of Team Wolfpack, meanwhile, continued to be one of the most consistent robots in all of Extreme Robots this year, with another 500 weekend, a 2 win, 2 loss outing, and nothing but high profile matches for the Wolfpack Ace. And that finally brings us to the winner of Newcastle Weekend, partying like it's 2022, Team Inferno. The UK live scene runs through Team Invade, and they showed exactly why here, leading their crew to a 12-win, sick-loss weekend with a five-robot roster, taking home everything but the Extreme Robots Challenge Belts. The most interesting scenario which developed on this team earlier on in the weekend, though, would be the crew joining forces with the one and only Team Immersion just a few days after their Labman Fight Fest performance, with Immersion joining the team's roster after a Fight Club melee victory. Now I know... Out of the two robots on Team Immersion, you'd think that the one, you know, named Ember would be the one repping the Team Inferno Flames, but nope. Ember would be a free agent at this event while Immersion had the fights on the big shows, despite both of these robots finishing 1 and 2 overall. But you gotta give Immersion and Ember some credit here. Not many robots are truly willing to fight anyone, whether they be a spinner or a flipper. But this squad was game for literally every opponent at the competition, whether it be Donald Thump, Zagkiel, Eruption, or Implosion. Another story with Team Inferno, though, would be Beast, who has been the short straw on the team for the last two shows, underperforming to the point it needed to partake in Fight Club melees, but this weekend would be a great redemption as a competitor for Beast. After struggling to even buy a win, Beast left Newcastle a new robot, Two wins, zero losses on the weekend, both of which by judge's decision over robots such as TR4, Ember, Thunderchild, and Titan. Another big thing to note here, zero reliability issues. It avoided singles matches, sure, but Beast proved to still be a beast in a melee setting with a Fight Club win and a 2v2 win to leave the weekend. Finally, we close it off on this episode with the Team Invade robots themselves. We'll go ahead and get the big sombrero out of the way here and start off with the sport's top front hinge, Ignition. The tanky black wedge bot, as always, held its own against numerous robots in both 1-on-1s and 2v2s, but came up short every single time. And this meant Ignition finished a weekend at 0-3, literally making up half of Team Inferno's losses at Newcastle. On the flip side, though, we have Implosion. The rookie axe bot for Team Invade, who has been clawing back to relevance after an 0-6 debut event. In Maidstone, we saw this robot get its first career wins, but the winning pedigree really caught up to Implosion at this event. 
four wins and one loss. An impressive performance, but last but certainly not least here, we discuss the year prior's TCC number two overall ranked robot eruption, who's now this year's TCC number 11 ranked robot leaving Newcastle after a five and one weekend with three of those five losses coming by way of knockout. Eruption ripped through the field during one-on-ones against the likes of Ripper 6 and Troublemaker, but really tore things apart in every single gladiator melee at the end of each Extreme Robot show. All but one, that is. Eruption did end its then-perfect weekend by getting sent out of the arena by Iron All 6 during the final gladiator at Newcastle. A disappointing act of vengeance by Team Iron All, but still a weekend Team Inferno should be very proud of. As after this competition, they would be one point away from tying for the lead entering the mid-season break. But that's all we have to talk about here at Extreme Robots Newcastle. Very brisk, but very sweet. A whole handful, 20 plus robots entering the field. But that's not where our discussion ends here. Nope. Real quick, we do got to discuss it. Not really much happened during the uh, Extreme Robots mid-season summer break where not much fighting took place during July and August and September. But we did have one thing, a brand new thing on Extreme Robots, and that is the transfer deadline. A little bit like the trade deadline you see in MLB and NFL, the transfer deadline gave numerous robots, whether they be on a different team or even a free agent, an opportunity to fight on a different squad's roster. And we only... I thought we were going to see a lot of big changes happen here, but quite frankly, we only really got to see three, and maybe we can even call that two and a half, because one of the exchanges was Troublemaker. Troublemaker has been on Team Quake all year, has only really had one super notable fight in that 2-1-2 with Manta, and it said that they were going to be transferring over to Team Inferno, but presumably, I guess I went back, because the minimal Colchester I have watched, it was still a Team Quake robot, don't know what's going on there, but I guess there was maybe a trade back or maybe a never mind situation. I'm not exactly too sure, but we did have a free agent finally get picked up in Donald Thump. Yes, Donald Thump, even after going 0-3 at this event, now joins the Team Quake roster. So Team Quake, even though they lost Aftershock, they have a new full combat spinner to add to their ranks. I'm happy for them for that case. They certainly needed something, even though Donald Thump is a far cry from Aftershock. The big story here, though, is TR4. Extreme Robots literally dedicated a whole Reactivate podcast episode to talking about this transfer window right here, and it was all about TR4. TR4 has been essentially the second best robot on Team Wolfpack outside of Iron All 8. It has been probably the best new robot this year. I mean, we've had Implosion. Implosion's been pretty solid, but TR4 has Iron All 6 flipper power, isn't the most reliable robot yet, but we know the Toon Raider gang is a solid team. Team Toon has made it to a Robot Wars Grand Final in the past, and they're trying to get that success to come their way even more so. Now, I don't really get this move personally. I feel like Team Wolfpack had a better shot than the team they transferred to, Team Divinity. But nonetheless, TR4, I mentioned it when we were talking about Team Wolfpack earlier in the video. When you look at TR4 and you think of Alex and you think of this... He's such a sweet dude. He's always smiling, even after defeats, even after going 0-3 on the weekend. He's an all-smiles kind of guy. Um, you wouldn't expect him to make a, to be a guy on Team Wolfpack, which is supposed to be the, oh, we are shades, and we're so cool, and we're evil, and all that with their short king, Shane Lale. But that's uh, that's what they did. They moved over to Team Divinity, and I'm not, I don't think Team Divinity is complaining. They did desperately need good robots i mean ripper six is good gabriel is good ripper seven should be good but they still haven't been able to pick up event points outside of what happens in the spinner class so maybe tr4 can help with that that means overall tr4 is now on team divinity donald thump is now on team quake and troublemaker jumped from team inferno only to go back to team quake so team quake should have good numbers at this colchester event you would certainly think so but there we go. Not the craziest transaction deadline. I was expecting maybe one or two more trades or free agent signings to be made. But that's what we got stuck with. So that's that. And that's everything that happened from Extreme Robots Newcastle to the midseason break. Getting you built up for Extreme Robots Colchester. And if you haven't watched Colchester yet, 
I'm going to go ahead and link the Extreme Robots YouTube channel in the description below because now that you have the primer, you can watch the three Extreme Robots Cold Chest Re events on their YouTube page. They were all live streamed. And having seen the first of the three events, some good stuff happening, some stuff that you really should look out for, be excited for, some great fights, some new spinners, a lot of great stuff. But let's go ahead and wrap you all up here at the Combot Collective. We don't want this video becoming a 30-minute mess. I am your host, as always, rocking the Viking helmet, Sterling Brown, aka Sterling TXTG on Instagram. You can follow me there. And for the Combot Collective, also on Instagram, also on Facebook, you can follow us on those pages, linked in the description below. We have numerous infographics on those pages, stat posts on those pages, news posts on those pages, and video upload posts on those pages. We also have a Discord server. You want to talk about video uploads? All of our video uploads get dropped and announced first on the TCC Discord server. We also have numerous robot combat teams, including Team Shock on the TCC Discord server. So you want to mingle and talk with some robot combat fans and some robot combat builders? That's the place to go. Be sure to check it out. But you're right here on the mothership, the YouTube page. And if you like this video, please give it a like. Please leave us a comment giving us your thoughts on the Extreme Robots Newcastle event in the mid-season break and what's going on in Colchester. And always, a little bit of constructive criticism. We want to make TCC better every single day. And we really have been trying to do that with how many uploads we've been posting lately. And of course, subscribe to the TCC YouTube channel. Ring that bell icon so you can hear about every single TCC upload. And like I mentioned, a lot of them lately. So, you know, good time to subscribe to the channel. We're almost to 600 subscribers. I'm so excited. Hopefully we can hit 1,000 before this time next year, right? How hard can it be? I'm going to go ahead and get out of here, though. This has been the Combat Collective with another UK breakdown. Expect a Robots Live Crawley breakdown within the next few weeks. A Battle of Robots Group A breakdown within the next few weeks. And of course, an Extreme Robots Colchester breakdown within the next few weeks. Hopefully we can get all these out before the rush of BattleBots Champions hits us like a brick wall. We'll be talking all about that on Robot Combat tonight. In the meantime, though, thank you all for watching. And we will catch you all next time on Extreme. On Extreme Robots? I don't think so. We aren't officially partnered yet. No. On the Combat Collective. There we go. This was the Combat Collective. I'm the hardest card ram and this Discord.